It has now been over two years since I began using Obsidian daily, and so much has changed since then. Obsidian has grown a lot in popularity, and as a result, we now have a bunch of new community plugins. And in this video, we're going over every single one I'm using. Many, but not all, of the plugins I'll go over today have been previously covered in the channel, so I'll be sure to link their respective links both on the screen and in the description below. But even if you've watched every single video on my channel, there's more than a handful of plugins I'll be covering today for the first time. There's plenty of ground to cover, so I'm going to group the plugins into 10 different categories, and we're going to start with the essentials. And when I say essentials, I don't mean the obvious ones like the calendar or advanced tables, as I don't think every single person needs those. These are plugins that I think everyone should have, regardless of what you use Obsidian for. This first one is called Setting Search, and it does one simple but really important thing. It lets you search through the Obsidian settings from the settings menu. You can search anything, including searching other plugins. I think it's only a matter of time before this becomes a native feature of Obsidian. And the same goes for the next plugin, which is Commander. This plugin lets us customize the spacing on the ribbon as well as add or remove different commands. But not just in the ribbon, it lets us add or remove commands from every menu and bar in Obsidian. This has become a necessity with the increase in community plugins and features in Obsidian. And as if all of that wasn't enough, you can also add macro commands straight from the plugin settings, just as you would on any other macro software. I have a video coming on the macros I use, so stay tuned for that. Next up on the list is recent files, because no matter what you do in Obsidian, you need a quick and easy way to find the files you're just working on. And this lightweight plugin does exactly that. Once you install it, simply locate the recent files tab and place it where it's most convenient for you. The last one in this section is called paste URL into selection. If you want to insert the URL into a text in Obsidian, you have to do it the markdown way, which is not a lot of work. However, with this plugin installed, you just grab a URL, select the text you want to paste and simply paste. Couldn't be any easier. Next up is journaling, and the first plugin in this category is, unsurprisingly, the calendar plugin, which is more than just a calendar. It lets you create daily and weekly notes by clicking a day on the calendar, and it automatically places them in a specified folder. It also lets you know if you wrote a lot that day by showing dots next to the day numbers. For now, you can still use the calendar plugin for weekly notes, but this functionality is going away in favor of a dedicated plugin called Periodic Notes, which is my second plugin in this category, and it takes journaling to the next level. With it, you can write daily and weekly notes, but also monthly, quarterly, and yearly notes, and you can place each note type in a specified folder. If you keep a daily journal, you know you're going to open up a new daily note every day, so why not make use of that habit that you already have and add some metadata to your daily notes that track various aspects of your life? You can do all of this with the Tracker plugin. Honestly, this is half of the reason I keep a daily journal. I tell it whether or not I meditated, if I went to the gym, my mood, and even my weight, and then I can easily render that information into gorgeous graphs to see how my habits are developing. Next up we have Super Plugins. These are plugins that add so much functionality to Obsidian that entire workflows are built off of them. And the first one is Templater. Templater is essentially a much more complex version of the Obsidian Core Templates plugin. At this point, I use Templater one way or another in every note I make in Obsidian. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it since I have a long video on Templater, and I also have another video on the other super plugin, DataView. You can use DataView to create anything about your notes in many different ways. In fact, let's move on to the next section as I make extended use of DataView using the next plugins. This next section is all about content consumption, and the first plugin on this category is keeping track of my books using Book Search. This is a great time-saving plugin that lets me import a book and all its metadata into my vault. I just toggle the book search plugin, give it a book title, and it gets added to my books folder with all of the metadata that comes with it, including a book cover. Using DataView, I can easily create a to-read list as well as a list of books I've already read. It's basically a superior and most importantly, local version of Goodreads. Then every time I want a new book to read, I just come to my to-read list and I can sort it however I want. Maybe I want to read the book recommended by someone specifically or by a specific author or maybe I want a short 200 page read. If you want to learn more about this workflow, make sure to check out my video on it. This next plugin helps me keep track of my movies. I like to take notes on the best movies that I watch and I import and process them using the Quick Add plugin. I haven't yet made a video on the Quick Add plugin as a whole, but I have it on my list. But the process here is similar to the book search plugin. I just trigger the script, type the movie name, and it gets added to my movies folder. And then just like with books, I can use DataView to display my movies and the result is a stunning list with covers of all the movies I've watched with my specific rating. And then just like I have a to read list, I have a to watch list. So in essence, the book search plugin lets you have your own private Goodreads, while this plugin lets you have your private IMDb. The last plugin in this category is the Pod Notes plugin, which lets me listen to podcasts inside my vault while taking notes on them. So then just like with books and movies, I have all my podcasts in a podcast folder. And once again, I use DataView to display all my podcasts with my rating. The next category is about content creating, and I'm going to give my own perspective on this as a YouTube creator, but this can be used for pretty much anything you're working on or projects you may have. And the plugin at the heart of all of this is Projects. Projects lets you build multiple views of the same content. You can have a table, a calendar, a board, and even a gallery. I use it for my YouTube channel and it's how I plan my videos. 
Projects also works with another plugin called the Database Folder plugin, which essentially gives you Notion-like databases in Obsidian, so you can have all the stuff you would in Notion, such as property types and even relational databases. The Database Folder plugin integrates seamlessly with projects, so you can have the Database Folder view as one of your project views. Another plugin I make extended use of in this category is Reading Time, which lets me know how long the text I've written will take to speak out loud. I use this on every video I make. I try my best to keep my videos packed with information using the least amount of time possible, so I like to have the reading time displayed at the bottom of my note. On a similar note, there's another plugin that I've been using for years, which is also very simple. It's called Better Word Count. And all it does is that it tells you how many words and characters your note has. This is especially useful for something like a YouTube title or tweets where you're limited in characters. This next category is about artificial intelligence in Obsidian. There aren't that many AI-related community plugins yet, but I think it's going to be a major focus in the future. But for now, we have the Text Generator plugin, which uses the OpenAI's GPT-3 API. That's a mouthful. And I have a video coming on this soon, but essentially you can generate text based on different inputs, such as from Matter. You can start a new note, give it some YAML headers, and then you can toggle the plugin to generate text. And as expected, this works really well, as this is using the best GPT-3 API in the world. I'm keeping a close eye on the AI development in Obsidian, as it's something I'm very interested in. If you're like me and want to learn more and be a part of the inevitable AI growth as well as STEM topics, then one of the best and most engaging ways is to do it through Brilliant, which is very kindly sponsoring this video. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform that is really good in turning difficult concepts into easy-to-understand bite-sized lessons. That's what makes it great. If you're as interested in AI and machine learning as I am, then learning Python is a must. I've taken plenty of Python courses over the years, and Brilliant's programming with Python easily ranks at the top. The problem with most online courses is that you're not actually learning by doing, but with Brilliant, you start from the basics, and before you know it, you're actually writing Python to solve real problems. Learning a little every day has a huge impact, and Brilliant has thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added monthly, so there's always something new to learn. To get started for free, visit Brilliant.com slash from Sergio and the first 100 people that sign up get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Alright, so next up we have integrations and the first one is the Kindle integration. If you're a Kindle reader like I am, then the Kindle Highlights plugin is an absolute must. It lets you seamlessly import and sync your Kindle Highlights to your vault. It's a great tool to have and takes little to no maintenance. The next integration is Readwise. If you're a paid user of Readwise, this one is also a must, as you can import your Readwise highlights onto your Obsidian Vault. I have a video planned on this, and I'm just waiting before Readwise's reader comes out of beta, as I think that will be a great addition to many people's workflows. Another popular integration is Obsidian Anki, which, as the name implies, lets you connect your Anki cards to Obsidian. But personally, I use a space repetition plugin instead. It keeps everything in Obsidian, and it's much more pleasant to use. I made a very recent video on this a few weeks ago, so make sure to check that out. This next category is a topic of one of my next videos, which is Vault Maintenance, and there's a total of four plugins in this section. And the first one here is the Plugin Update Tracker, which lets you see which plugins need updating, and most importantly, why. Once you install it, there's an icon in your status bar that will let you know which plugins have an update and their respective release notes. It also lets you customize how many days a plugin will wait before being prompted to update, which is super useful because it often is the case that a fresh release will have a bug here and there, so I like to set this value to 3. Next up, we have the Note Refactor plugin, which lets me break a note into multiple different notes in many different ways. For instance, if you have a lot of headers in one note, you can use the Note Refactor to move those headers into their own individual note. You can also attach your selection to an existing note or create a new note entirely with a bunch of preset parameters. The one I find myself using the most is definitely splitting a selection using the first line as the file name. Another plugin I use, which kind of goes hand in hand with the Note Refactor, is the Table of Contents. And as the name implies, it lets you instantly build a table of contents for a note where you have a bunch of headers. And the last plugin on this list is Gender, which lets you scan your vault based on your parameters such as orphans, empties, big notes, and lets you delete them straight from the Gender window. I'm very excited to show you how I use all four of these plugins as well as some other tips and tricks on maintaining my vault, so make sure you subscribe for that. And now we have some customizations. In the first section, I mentioned the commander, paste URL into selection, setting search, and recent files. But you can also use the homepage and the banners plugin to create a dashboard like this one right here. And you can then customize it however you want, so if that interests you, make sure to watch my dashboard video. Lastly on this section is style settings, which lets you customize every little bit of the theme you're using. If the theme you're using so happens to be the minimal theme like the one I'm using here, then there's also a companion plugin for it called the minimal theme settings. Alright, so now we have some simple but useful plugins. The first one here is called Natural Language Dates, and it lets you add the date in natural language as you would in an app like Todoist or Fantastical. Simply type at followed by your prompt and it'll update accordingly. If you want to have something similar for emojis, you can use the Emoji Shortcodes plugin. 
This plugin lets you type out your emoji as you would in apps such as Telegram or Discord. Just type a colon followed by a description of the emoji and you're ready to go. Lastly, we have Editor Syntax Highlight. And what it does is that it highlights your syntax even in edit mode, whereas without this plugin, you have to go into preview mode to see all of the syntax highlighted. This is pretty much every plugin I'm using right now, but I'm also experimenting with some other ones such as Workspaces, Map View, and Strange New Worlds. The community is always coming up with great new plugins, and it's crazy to see how much Obsidian has grown over the last year, and I'm looking forward to making this video again a year from now. And once again, you can find the links to every video mentioned in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great one. Bye.